Um, good afternoon. I'm continuing on with the entrepreneurial series. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what goes on with my work besides the entrepreneurial stuff. Uh, when I was in practice years ago, I still have a small practice, and when I work on people, I find that I kind of lose myself. Uh, there's a concentration that sets in a, a curiosity uh, with kinesiology. You never know what's going on. And I've come to not argue with what I find. I just fix what I find, and people seem to get better. Uh, as I said before, I was at a trade show in London, and a medical doctor from Chicago came up, and he said, ah, I never had any time for that muscle-pulling stuff. And I said, yeah, me neither. I said, but over the years, I've pulled on people's muscles, and they've gotten better, so I've continued to do it. But uh, somehow, well, it's not somehow, it wasn't an accident, uh, one of my mentors, John Bandy, was a kinesiologist, kinesiologist, chiropractor, chiropractor. He just loved what he did and still doing it. Uh, and he, uh, full-time, uh, had his office set up, so he did his practice. He walked in in the morning, went straight to a room uh, where a patient was waiting, and uh, I modeled my practice as much after him as I could. When I saw the aspects of practice that I didn't like to do, I hired people to do it. Uh, the first gal came with the office when I bought an office, and uh, she was incapable of doing the books. And we bounced checks, and I said to her, you know, why aren't you doing your job? She said, oh, my father, who I bought the practice from, always checked this stuff. And I said, okay, you got to go. She said, what? I said, because I don't. It's not, I'm not my, it's not my personality. It's not who I do. I'm a doctor. That's all I want to do. I'll look at it from time to time, but not very often. And I've gotten shit for that for the years, but... But that's not the point of this video. <clears throat> when I would leave my practice, my personal life would come back in. Uh, I had girlfriends. They would leave me. They would come. I would, you know, I would go through these states. I would worry about things. Uh, and then I took a class with a man named Martin Sage. One of the things he asked me is, if you had a week to live, what would you do? And I didn't say, go into my practice, which kind of surprised me. Yeah, because there was a relief there. There was a, the focus caused a relief in my system. But what I've learned from Martin, what I can work with people, is on how to respond to life as opposed to react to life. Uh, so many times we're drawn towards conflict, and the conflict sets off the same kind of chemistry in the body as excitement. And we have a tendency to move into conflict unconsciously. And a lot of it's our enculturation. Uh, we learn it from other people, and then we move into it, and we do it. And uh, So one of the things that uh, in my entrepreneurial classes, I'm going to do a two-week seminar on Maui this summer uh, in the entrepreneurial game. Uh, and we're going to work on a lot on exercises, on getting you to respond to things. We're going to provoke you and then let you see where you get got. And then you just make a decision. I don't care whether you don't like getting God or not. That's what I want you to look at. If you don't notice you're doing it, if it's, if it's something that you're doing unconsciously, then you're going to continue to do it. If I can point out to you, look, right there, right there. It, is this what you want to be doing right now? And if you look and say, yeah, yeah, I like this. I like the arguing. I like the fight. I like everything. I absolutely encourage you to move on in that area or stay in that area. And But try and see and look and be more conscious about it. Uh, if a person comes in and they come in and negotiate, and I can see that they're unconsciously below the line, I will go into the most absurd negotiations I can with the person. But what I also offer, along with the entrepreneurial uh, advice, hmm, maybe, uh, is an emotional intelligence, a way to look at your life and keep you moving in the direction that you want to move. Uh, if you get sidetracked and you don't notice it, to have a team around you uh, where they'll go, wait a minute, wait a minute, are we going where you want to be going? Are we, to the entrepreneur. Is this where you want to be taking this business? Uh, I co-trained an event in Seattle in a doctor's office, and uh, one of the doctors who helped run the clinic was a woman doctor, a naturopath, and her husband was the logistics, and he said, I don't need to be in on this. And I said, look, how many times do your doctors come out of the with a patient, and you can see that they've suffered, they've gotten beat up, they've got into that patient's energy field, and it has cost them. He said, ooh, happens all the time. He said, I don't know what to do about it. I said, that's what I'm going to teach you. That's why it's worth being in here for this. And with them, we had 
what we call mini flash meetings. I talked about flash meetings. We're going over, we'll be going over those a little bit more. But the mini flash meetings, you just stop. Get the person to notice what's going on, notice when it started, and then let them move on. Because if you don't notice it, there's nothing you can do about it. Hence the name of my book, Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing, www.micpeakperformance.com.